Let's there you talk go. about the Miami Dolphins and begin with Kenyon Drake. They're very talented running back who was amazing down the stretch last year. I think he was one of the higher percentage of players on championship slash playoff yeah, rosters last season because of that late season surge. But the question here is this, and I almost considered Kenyon Drake on my do not draft list. Do we believe, do we believe that Kenyon Drake has this job unto himself, will have this job unto himself, or is the presence of Frank Gore and Matthew's buddy, Kalen Balaj too much to offset Kale, uh, Kenyon Drake's value, Matthew? I think so. I'm nervous about Kenyon Drake. I, my concerns on Kenyon Drake here is that as great as he was last year, I don't think they view him as an every down workhorse back. He had four different carries last year in which he racked up over 20 post-contact yards. Here's the reason to mention that, right? And listen, they count, but if you get rid of those carries, Kenyon Drake's yards per carry after contact gets around the, the Samaj P. Ryan, Matt Breida level. Like he had a, he had a, a handful of big plays that, I don't know that you can count on. Now, understand, like, he is a big play guy. Yep. I mean, that was that was uh, one of his calling cards in college as well. Right. So I don't want to totally take that away. But I think it's hard to count on. I think it's hard to go into a, to a year expecting all those big plays. Get this, Field. Over the past nine seasons, since we began tracking yards before and after contact, there are just two instances in which a player had more than four games with a carry gaining 20 yards plus after first contact. Only two instances. Adrian Peterson in 2012, Arian Foster in 2014. Listen, if we if Kenyon Drake is Adrian Peterson or Arian Foster, then I'm wrong. Then I've just I've completely judged this character wrong. Sure. Uh, not his character. I, I've never met the man, but I, I completely judged him as a player wrong. But I think he is more of a complimentary back, a big play back than a true workhorse back, and it's one of the reasons why I do think Kalen Balaj has a chance at a fantasy relevant role on this team. So what it sounds relatively like is they're not drafting any of the Dolphins running backs as a potential starter or even a flex to begin the season. I don't mind Kenyon Drake at a certain price point, but where he's going, running back 18, you know, I don't I would not want him as one of my two starting running backs this year in a standard 10 team league. Okay? Fair enough. Frank Gore is timeless, man. He's fun to watch. I, you know, it's it <laughs> feels weird to think of a season where he's not even draftable, but that's probably where we're at just because of the spot where he lines up on the depth chart. He's one of those guys that I would gladly take way at the end of my draft because you know all he does is grind yep. and pound, yep. and he's going to be there. And he's still, I think, going to have an opportunity. I think he's going to actually have an opportunity to score in this offense. I think if they're down near the goal line, he's a guy that they will utilize potentially in that situation. So, you know, you know me. I'm a Frank Gore apologist. It's not, I, I love Frank Gore as a player field. Like, you know, mad respect for him. I think he's a Hall of Famer, no doubt. Um, my concern is is that my concern is the drain he has on Drake's fantasy value. I don't know that he's somebody that has standalone fantasy value. It would be hard for me to see him getting enough run consistently where you'd feel comfortable starting In him. In some ways, he reminds me of what Eli McGuire would have been if he had stayed healthy, taking value away from other players you might be more interested in. Let's get to the wide receivers. It's not as, to be honest with you, it's, it's not a great outlook for the wide receivers either. Yeah. You've got four in play that I think people are asking about. Devontae Parker, their former first or their first round pick a few years ago. Danny Amendola and Albert Wilson both signed this offseason. Plus Kenny Stills, the deep threat who's been there and has been a touchdown scorer for them. I mean, so in terms of how we have him ranked, Devontae Parker is the player we're most optimistic about. But Matthew, if you had to choose one, would you would you even would you pass? Yeah, listen, I think there's potential ups. I mean, we've been waiting forever for Devontae Parker, but his price point now is so low at wide receiver 38 that maybe it's worth taking a flyer on him. I mean, look, here's a here's a guy that, believe it or not, like this is uh, per Mike Clay, our friend Mike Clay, last season averaged a 21% target share, 7.4 targets per game, ranked 29th at wide receiver during his 12 full games that he played. So here's a guy that got somewhat unlucky in touchdowns, and was a top 30 wide receiver when healthy. That's always the question with him. Yeah. We've been waiting forever for Devontae Parker, but a wide receiver 38? Yeah. Maybe but here's my thing. I get it. Listen, I yeah. totally get it. My, my big thing is this, is whether he's getting the target share or not, I don't know if he's a good player. Right. Like, I don't know if they just misevaluated here. He had checked every box coming out of Louisville. 6'3", yeah. 215 pounds, ran like the wind. I'm just not so – I'm and, and if he proves me wrong, great. The Dolphins could really use it. They gave $8 million a year to Albert Wilson. They gave $6 million a year to Danny Amendola. Do we need to be paying more attention to them? 100% on Amendola. Yeah, and I think, obviously, with Jarvis Landry gone, this is where you see Danny Amendola filling in the holes. And last year, the thing about Danny Amendola that always, when he was with the Patriots, he was used on special teams, and I felt like he was always an injury waiting to happen because he's fearless, 
but he's a guy who had a lot coming, especially on those special teams plays. When you added the workload of him picking up uh, last year when they had no Julian Edelman, yep. we wondered if he could stay healthy, and he actually did. I'm keeping an eye on yeah. Albert Wilson for the simple reason that they gave him a, it, it's really not a, I mean, it's a three year deal with a $24 million maximum. As we know in the NFL, sometimes you have to break these things down on a much more year by year basis. But for around $8 million a season, Albert Wilson's going to play for the Miami Dolphins. There's been some talk recently about where does he fit Right, because he's not a pure slot guy because they have Amendola. He's also maybe not a traditional outside receiver. I know our buddy Matt Harmon has always been a fan of Albert Wilson's game. There's certainly a prime opportunity here because someone's got to catch passes. I'm not saying you should go ahead and draft him, but just file it away as they get closer to preseason game action to see what he becomes. I also, even though Amendola is going into a place where Landry left. I don't think he gets the volume that Landry had. I'm not suggesting that he is going to pick up that share. We're running short on time. Otherwise, I would have taken a call from my wife live, who again literally (laughs) just, I just, just looked over my phone. Hello, Beth. Yeah, missed call Uh, from my wife, Beth. Last player to know. But but yeah, I do. I Wilson, I agree, is a name. I feel like the Dolphins wide Just receiver core is all keep an eye on. I do think Amendola late and in a PPR draft is very interesting. Can he play all 16 games? That's always the question. But yep. while he's out there, that Jarvis Landry role, as Stefania noted, wide open. Uh, and we know Tannehill does like to throw to the slot. Amendola, good and then player. There's, then there's like, let's see what Tannehill does. I mean, here's a guy who was gone all last year. We don't even know how this is really going to look. Yeah, Mike not- Kosecki is their second round pick out of Penn State. Listen, we do not have him ranked as if he is like the ultimate dart throw. Just again, another player that profiles athletically as a major red zone stud. The limitation on him coming into the draft was, hey, I'm not sure he can hold his own as a blocker yet. We don't count blocking points in fantasy football. Right. Um, they need a tight end in a bad way down there. Julius mm-hmm. Thomas is gone. We have not seen consistent play at that position for them for a long time. I'm. He's, he is a crazy athlete. Crazy, crazy athlete. Let's see if it translates on the field soon. It certainly hasn't worked out the way they wanted to or the way Adam Gates had hoped for in Miami. But uh, in theory, Adam Gates' offenses have traditionally featured tight ends. Like, again, like, it, you know, so uh, there's certainly reason for optimism in dynasty leagues, assuming Gates stays in Miami. Let's for get to the- um, yeah. Kalen Balaj, I'll just, I've mentioned him a number of different times. I'll mention him again, but that's my big sleeper. I do love Kalen Balaj. I think he was misused at Arizona State just as a late-round flyer at running back in Miami.